Very helping. I'm a mobile solutions architect in Vodafone Ireland, uh, working in the mobile industry for the past uh, 18 years and uh, enjoying it as it's uh, part of my passion as well. It's not just my job, it's something I live and breathe on a, a daily basis. And the mobile data, uh, is, I'm using a lot of it in my personal life, uh, friends, family, business. But the key thing about all this is the security of all this data and how you use it. So over the, the course of the next uh, 20 minutes, I'm just going to go through uh, the threats that are out there the, the, and just some tips and tricks in relation to how you protect your company and your friends and family as well. So GDPR is here. Uh, it happened. No one died. Uh, but uh, a lot of people had to spend a lot of money. And one of the uh, key things I was talking to some people about in relation to GDPR is that don't try and do it all on your own. There are experts out there. Um, not one expert will do everything for you. Um, but it, it, if you try to do these things on your own, you'll, you'll notice from the GDPR regulation that the document is mainly in legal speak and it's it's quite complex so you're better off using some expertise out there but not one company will make you gdpr compliant it'll be a combination of tools um, and particularly around mobile data it'll be about again doing simple things like password encryption um, and using uh, device management solutions uh, depending on the size of your organization So the, I'm just going to show you a video clip that's a bit of a reality check uh, for all of us. I'm guilty of this as well in relation to social media and what's online and everything like this. So it's a, it's a really interesting video and I'm sure you'll have the same reaction I had once you see it. Dus dat weten niet veel mensen. Hoe is mijn spierscheur? <laughs> Maison Rouge, balkon, plan. Ja. Ik zie geld, ik zie uh, transacties. Maar ik kent je rekeningnummer van buiten? Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Er staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9, 7. Last month, mm -hmm. you spent 200 euro's on alcohol. Vorige maand 300 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, 5, ja. voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. 295.000 euro. Ja, maar eigenlijk. 41. Ja. Is dat juist? Ja, dat is juist. tweeting, I'm doing stuff on LinkedIn, I'm doing stuff on Facebook, so if you noticed at the start of that video, the only information that they got off those people as they walked in was their, was their face. So they're, they literally just seen their face, they went online, they were able to use pictures of these people to go in and find out all the information on those people, and it, it was frightening. Bank account details, uh, details about their life, everything is online. 
and I know all of us at some stage, our children, everything like that, they're all putting this stuff up online and people know more about you than you'd think. So it's so easy to commit fraud. So the, the devices uh, that we're using in our hands today are like, they're becoming faster and faster and they're more throughput. It, it, we're consuming more data year on year. Um, even as the networks, uh, the speeds on the networks increase. Uh, recently at Mobile World Congress, uh, which I was over at a demonstration with Ericsson, and they had a demonstration of a, a Sony XZ2 phone getting two gigabits speeds. So this is what Ronan hit, uh, hit on earlier in relation to will fiber bring uh, basically the connectivity to the homes in Ireland for all the kind of remote working and everything. Not on its own, it won't, but it'll be a combination of 5G, even 4G, because uh, part of the uh, technology is being used for uh, 5G will enhance 4G as well. So the handset that was on the Ericsson stand in, at Mobile World Congress, getting the two gigabit speeds, is a, is a phone that's out today. It's, it was the Sony XZ2, but we have the, the Samsungs out there capable of these speeds as well. So as we consume more data, they, they, we're going to need more uh, security on top of this. So it's just something to bear in mind. So in relation to manufacturers that are out there today, there's uh, a lot of large companies are looking at uh, protecting their, their digital fleet. Um, there are ways of automating this for large companies and even small SME companies as well. So there's introduction of technologies like uh, Samsung Knox and KME. Uh, which is Knox Mobile Enrollment. Then you have uh, Apple Device Enrollment Program. And then recently, which is not in Ireland yet, but will be coming soon, is uh, Google Zero Touch. Now, what this means is, even from a GDPR point of view, that you will be able to, from cradle to grave, trace the, the hardware. So no longer will you have drawers full of devices that people have left the organization and haven't given you their Gmail password or they haven't given you their iTunes account. When you use these technologies, you'll be able to basically wipe them. They'll be enrolled uh, as a company phone. Now, the other element to that as well is the fact that the Apple and Samsung are currently the leaders uh, from a security point of view. Samsung haven't spent quite a lot of money on uh, the Knox side of things from a security point of view. And Apple, with the, their IO, the security uh, built into iOS, but again, Google are, are introducing change into this now. So there will be other manufacturers that will be kind of joining the fold from a security point of view. And this is, Google are doing a, a big launch of this in Paris uh, next month. Uh, so it's something to just be aware of. But there, the, the security is there if you use it. But you can, a, a lot of organizations don't want people going around with two phones. So with this type of technology, you can split the phones in two to have a personal side and a business side. So you can have security on your personal photographs and your business side and never the twain shall meet. The only information that will go from one side to the other will be uh, the contacts because your contacts for your car kit or your uh, Bluetooth or anything like that. So th it's just good to be aware because it is amazing the amount of people out there that are not aware of uh, these technologies and the fact that you can keep your private and your business information um, secure which is really key based on the video that we watched. So on the mobile device security, and again, this isn't for every organization. It, it, it could be, like it can be used from small all the way up to large. Uh, last year's Gartner report shows that VMware, which uh, is AirWatch, uh, was basically the leader in this field. So again, all these uh, different platforms are to help you secure your devices. So they all do different things. So, like, I couldn't point at one and say, yeah, that's the best, because it depends on your organization and the requirements that you have. But it's just a matter of knowing that these are out here. And the one name that's probably surprising there on this slide is BlackBerry. So this, this isn't BlackBerry handsets. This is the BlackBerry software. So they were always good at the security side of things. And they are making a return, as we can see on the, the report, from the security point of view, but there is no connection between the, the BlackBerry mobile device management software and the BlackBerry handsets. So this is just something that customers need to be aware and people need to be aware that you can protect your fleet now with GDPR in place. You can uh, push out policies to encrypt your device, make sure there's a password on the device so that you're protecting all your data, personal and business. So, And it's just, just to be aware that, that that information is there. 
So just moving on. Um, again, as I was touching off uh, the, from Mobile World Congress, mobile networks are getting faster uh, day by day. Um, even here today, uh, I know the free Wi-Fi was uh, pretty poor, but the, the mobile network even here on 4G, I was getting uh, 150 meg down and 20 meg up. Like on a mobile network, that's pretty amazing. Um, I remember uh, back in ESAT Digifone getting 28 kilobits on a Motorola Time port. And look how far we've come in such a short space of time when, when uh, we're now getting gigabit speeds onto 4G networks, which is pretty amazing. Um, and it really will change the way we work, as in the whole remote working and everything as we heard from our previous speaker, um, which, is, which is really amazing. So this is just a video on the Gigabit Society, just showing you what the data is going to be used for. So this is just going through all the different kind of sensors and everything being used. Even as you'll hear some of my colleagues speaking on the uh, IoT stand, they'll be talking about the sensors and everything around narrowband IT and gathering all this data around, both from an education point of view, from a medical point of view, gathering information from smartwatches, from people's health and everything like that, and, and gathering all this data up. So we're already working with uh, Dublin City Council on um, smart traffic lights and smart lighting and so on. So this is this is all being uh, consumed. Augmented reality. We have the likes of uh, IKEA doing this now, where you can hold your phone up and put a piece of furniture in your house without physically putting it there. The, the smart cars which will come there have been a few hiccups but they are coming so as you can see all this data that we're gathering and we need to be able to use it uh, within a gigabit society so as the, the speeds increase between Syro, Vodafone and all the other carriers that bring gigabit speeds to the market we have to kind of secure all this information which is which is vital So just a couple of examples where uh, 5G will be used uh, in industries and has already been uh, used uh, from a 4G point of view on some of this. So we've got automotive uh, and there's huge investment from the likes of Audi, BMW and so on. Um, augmented reality, you're going to see a lot more of this where you have even the likes of Lego using augmented reality. So the kid buys his Lego toy but he can hold up his tablet and the whole thing comes to life. So bringing a, a new dimension um, to uh, the, the fun on that. Uh, utilities, health and manufacturing. So the, on that side of things, you've got real-time monitoring. Um, I'm currently uh, doing a trial with ESB on a smart meter. So all the information of the electricity I'm using in my home is going via the, the mobile network back to uh, the ESB network so they get real-time data. So they're, they're not having to go and collect it from a meter. Um, also, on the, they're using a lot of, uh, in the oil industry, augmented reality as well, so that they're wearing augmented reality glasses and they're able to basically see what's going on with the machinery as they look at it, so they're getting the load balancing and all the information in real time. So it's, it's making uh, the way they work safer and, again, using wireless technology. Um, I'm, I'm around for, the, for today, I'm speaking on uh, the uh, IT and data stand as well, uh, but I'll be also on the Vodafone stand, so that if there's any questions or any information you need at all, either look me up on LinkedIn or that's my email address. So thank you very much for your time.